Here comes our final panel. Uh, I don't know if anybody's been over to the Social Gaming Summit, which was taking place over on the side, but Arden Lukowicz, who's the founder of Bitmarkers, has done a couple presentations over there. He did a Bitcoins 101 session actually earlier for the gamers. So we've got him back now. He also does financial analysis for Aria Casino, so he's got a lot of experience. He's going to corral our panelists, choreograph this panel, and take it home for us, because this is the last one, right? Let's make it good, guys. Let's give him a big round of applause. Yeah. All right. Yeah, thanks. And uh, I think I'd like to start off with uh, just a round of applause for Stuart and everything he's done, done here with Inside Bitcoins. Um, it, it's been a lot of fun, and I know we've all sort of grown our professional network just being around other people as crazy as we all are about Bitcoins uh, at least makes me believe that this is going somewhere and I'm not just a crazy and alone. So um, thank you for that. Uh, I'd, I'd like to introduce our great panelist. Um, uh, we were speaking over lunch and kind of going back and forth already with our point of views. So uh, it, sh it should definitely be very interesting. We have uh, Andreas with uh, Root11. We have Adam, who's a, a partner at Strategic Council Corp. Eric with ZipZap, Izzy with Podesta Group, and Robert Cho with Second Market. And uh, so we kind of have everyone, lobbyist groups, legal, and uh, I'll let you guys go ahead and make short introductions of yourselves. So let's, let's start on this Great. end. Just uh, very briefly, I'm a principal at the Podesta Group. My name is Izzy Klein. Uh, I've been paying attention to the virtual currency space for quite a while, have a few, cli uh, have a few former clients, uh, including uh, Robert at Second Market um, and, uh, and a few other folks uh, in this space, and, uh, and look forward to, um, to hearing what the rest of my co-panelists have to say um, and have really enjoyed uh, the conference thus far. Thanks, uh, thanks Stuart. Hi, I'm uh, Bobby Cho. I'm a vice president at uh, Second Market, which is a broker-dealer registered in New York. And um, I'm also the head, spearhead uh, Bitcoin trading at Second Market, um, along with uh, my group also is the authorized participant to the Bitcoin Investment Trust, or the BID as we like to call it. And um, I'm really excited to be here. My name is Adam Edinger, and I'm an attorney. I counsel technology companies, especially in the startup phase, pre-public. And more and more since the so, uh, middle of last year, Bitcoin companies in different sectors, whether it's uh, mining, payments. Uh, I'm happy to see a lot of my clients were here this year. And going farther, it's just been a lot of fun. I'm also representing a number of investors that have become very active this year in the Bitcoin space. Uh, most of my work is in the Silicon Valley and some in Los Angeles. Hi, I'm, <clears throat> my name is Eric for uh, VP BizDev for ZipZap. I'm currently focusing on Europe, Middle East, Africa, and Asia markets, uh, more for the developing uh, areas. Um, what we're doing with ZipZap is we're, we're growing our global cash payment network. Um, you guys probably remember us when we were operating in the States with BitInstant. Um, so we're kind of uh, growing our model uh, into different markets right now. I've been kind of really traveling a lot to uh, Baltics, Europe, um, Africa as well. So a lot coming from us starting from January. So really excited about it. Hi, I'm Andreas Antonopoulos. I'm a co-host on Let's Talk Bitcoin. I'm writing the O'Reilly book for Bitcoin. And uh, I'm very interested in uh, Bitcoin in the developing world and the other six billion. Since, uh, since you last spoke and uh, you're with the developers world, uh, how has Bitcoin's origin from cryptography groups shaped and impacted the trust relationships currently inside of the community? How would you say? I think uh, Bitcoin really uh, revolutionizes trust by changing trust from uh, a model where trust is achieved through exclusion of access, which is the traditional financial model, to one where trust is enabled through computation. And what that means is you can create an open access network where anyone can connect, innovate at the edges, and have immediate access to a world economic network with full trust in the system. Trust is decentralized, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, and it's given directly to empower the individual. And that model is radical, it's revolutionary, and it's going to change the world. Just, uh, 
just just curious, who here? Uh, obviously, there's financial reasons too, but who here? What is trust the most important reason that you you uh, are following Bitcoin with openness? It's it's very interesting. Uh, any other? So uh, I'd say the next topic would be uh, legitimacy and uh, where the current state of that would be. And I'll, I'll pass it over to, to Robert. Uh, so I think we're in a, a really interesting phase right now as regulation here in the U.S. is really yet to be seen, um, which I think will happen in Q1 of next year, Q2, as kind of the regulators wrap their heads around it. Um, but regarding legitimacy, I think that what we're seeing is kind of a weeding out of the illegitimate players from maybe a year or two ago to more the legitimate players. Um, I think it's just a natural progression of the market along with the players involved. And I think that we need that to occur um, for real, the institutional money, the institutional guys to really get involved um, to kind of bridge that gap. Any other comments? The, I was thinking about it more today uh, that I remember in 90, yes, 1994, 1995 as the internet began to commercialize. Uh, it went through very much the same sort of cycle into legitimacy uh, as it went into the mind space. The number one ISP in the country at the time, and it was one of my first clients, was Netcom, which I think had 100,000 or even less than that in, uh, as the internet started to open up uh, and was still the number one ISP in 1996 with half a, thou half a million accounts. And what was happening is so many of the people that saw the vision for the Internet, the openness, the capability of what this platform would do and what it could enable, um, started to meet more with venture money, started to meet more with uh, a different professional entrepreneurship. Some of it merged. Some, some people got ro rolled over. Um, but as people became more aware and as more is that all the other processes actually got to get involved, such as regulatory controls, and us trying to figure out and figuring out how it's all going to work at the end of the day, and people became more accustomed to it. Uh, it's not so much the legitimacy of the platform, whether it's you know uh, the internet platform, TCP IP, or Bitcoin protocols and everything goes with it, but the entire ecosystem of users, of uh, companies that are moving it forward and of the investors that help them. And in the last month, we're seeing that uh, really, and this does remind me of sort of 1995, when Kleiner Perkins uh, financed Netscape. It wasn't the first Mosaic browser, and unfortunately, some of the first innovators weren't there uh, soon afterwards. Uh, but we're seeing this again with Andreessen Horowitz, which is really a, a thought leader and a lead investor in the Silicon Valley. It's one of the firms that other firms watch. Uh, being interested in this, uh, adding partners to move towards it, uh, which was they added one new partner uh, just on the 9th. Uh, Axel Partners go, coming into Circle. Um, it raises the bar in many ways, but it also is going to give confidence to the entire network. Uh, it is something like that that may help to fix the number one complaint I've heard here, which is, hey, our companies don't have access to banks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, legitimacy is definitely uh, goes hand in hand. And e even the largest companies in, in Bitcoin, we've seen nearly a 180 flip of how they were probably a year ago and how now. Uh, one, one thing that's always been important with uh, Bitcoin as well has been the transparency of the network. And one of the uh, hottest topics uh, of recent has been Bitcoin uh, address blacklisting, uh, KYC and AML compliance hurdles, and most specifically companies such as is coin validation. Is there uh, anyone who, any of this directly affects, uh, I guess, ZipZap or Andreas? Sure. Um, well, first of all, slightly on the previous topic, I reject the very concept of legitimacy as something that we should seek, need, or require in Bitcoin. Legitimacy is a word bandied around by the most corrupt, morally bankrupt forces on this planet to try to smear Bitcoin. We don't need legitimacy, we didn't ask for permission, and we don't require the approval of anyone. Bitcoin is here, it works, 
And the forces that ask us or try to give us legitimacy are themselves morally bankrupt. So why should we care first? Secondly, on the issue of coin validation, uh, these attempts to somehow fix the Bitcoin protocol to prevent theft will not only fail, but will reintroduce to the core of the protocol the types of controls and levers of power that have traditionally used to corrupt and influence the currency. Those are exactly the forces we pushed out of the core of Bitcoin, and we don't need them. In fact, they would have a corrosive influence from the very beginning, and they would spell the doom of Bitcoin, the currency. They won't work, and I'll tell you why they won't work. When HSBC launders money through Bitcoin, their coins won't get blacklisted. WikiLeaks coins will. Greenpeace coins will. The, uh, uh, the forces of dissent within oppressive governments will have their coins blacklisted. But guess what? HSBC could sue whoever creates that blacklist and terminate their operation. If we have blacklists within Bitcoin, we are introducing a counterparty risk that introduces the entire legal system back into a system that's based on trust between two parties, only two parties. The only requirement to redeem a transaction on Bitcoin is that you have the necessary code to solve the equation. That's it. That's where Bitcoin gets its legitimacy from. So, so, so that's definitely a uh, uh, the the uh, where where the community's thoughts have been from from the start. But especially with with companies like Second Market, there there does have to be the proper interaction between the two um, financial worlds. Uh, I zip uh you're you're in the middle of that too what what's your what's your thoughts especially with bit bit instant you guys have been there and yeah so you know we've gone through you know some of the hurdles and everything else with compliance and regulation and the approach that we're taking um is obviously every customer that comes through us and using cash to get bitcoin um you know we do the KYC process and the onloading with the exchanges we don't hold any funds we're not an exchange ourselves but you know we are enabling a easier, quicker way in which cash can get into exchanges from consumers, the everyday consumer, the the you know shopkeeper in Africa, you know needing to get Bitcoin, or um, you know emerging markets that need that quick access for 100 euros or 50 euros or 10 euros. Um, we're really targeting that mainstream consumer adoption. Really, um, you know, we can talk about financial instruments and derivatives and forex and all that stuff, which is great, but you know, we really need to look at what Bitcoin can do for emerging markets. Um, we really need to focus on how we can improve the economies uh, in Africa and Asia and, and all over the world, really. Um, I mean, again, we're, we're taking a stance on remittance ourselves. So um, here we are as a nation, uh, you know, giving these developing nations bil uh, billions and billions and billions of dollars of aid every single year, yet we charge them billions and billions of dollars of remittance fees. So in this equation, something doesn't make sense, and that needs to stop right now, uh, period, you know? <laughs> you know, when you send money, say you send $100 to Kenya right now, that $100, you're going to have to spend, what, 40 bucks to, to send it? You know, this person receiving the money in Kenya Imagine if they were receiving $40 more every time you sent $100. You know, this is the market that needs to be flipped upside down on its head. Big time. You know, seriously. Seriously. If there was one area of Bitcoin that we could target right now and all make a massive change globally, it's in the remittance market everywhere. Yeah, you think the other six billion who are dealing with that kind of stuff care about legitimacy? Yeah, exactly. They care about the fact that they're getting ripped off by international corporations that are sucking money out of the system from the poorest people in the world. Isn't that legitimacy? In other words, knowing that I'm going to get what somebody sends me and I'm going to get the whole amount, to me that, that's a legitimate transaction. I mean, maybe it's a semantic issue. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that any industry should own the work. Uh, and I think that, if anything, because legitimacy or trust can get coded into Bitcoin, can get coded into that, I mean, that's the real beauty, I think, of it. Um, and, and also the opportunity to give people the amount that they want. In other words, there are a number of people this week that are showing off uh, third-party signatures for escrow. For, 
I mean, it's a, ultimately, it's a trust mechanism. In a right, way. algorithmic trust. Right. But that's not how the word is used most of the time when we're hearing these discussions. Uh, it's used in reference to control over the destination of your money. It's used in reference to political control over the recipients. Now, that's a whole different ballgame. I totally agree with you. If we're talking about um, transactional legitimacy, that's a matter of simply verifying the execution of the output. That is legitimacy in the algorithm. That is trust right in the algorithm. It doesn't involve any counterparties. That's the magic of Bitcoin. But that's not how the word is used most of the time in these discussions. with your Bitcoin and get 3% back with GIFT. On GIFT, you can get gift cards with Bitcoin. Choose from over 200 retailers, including Target, GameStop, Gap, and more. GIFT makes it easy to shop on Android or on the web. There are no additional fees, and when you shop with Bitcoin, you get 3% back. Go ahead, try GIFT. That's G-Y-F-T dot com.